Hi there, this is Rich Troxler, aka Rich Trox. If you've been following my videos on reading water and developing effective fishing strategies, then you already know how important finding good structure is in the overall scheme of things. And while some beaches are blessed with abundant structure, many others are nothing more than long stretches of open beach with no real prominent structure. But regardless of how bland the beach may appear, there is usually some sort of structure around. This is because, one, nature rarely does anything linear or straight. Two, water seeks its own level. In the ocean, water is always moving. And three, sand doesn't disappear. It always goes somewhere. So after every storm, expect the beach to reconfigure itself to some degree. A very common configuration for many beaches is what I call humps and dips. I've mentioned these before in other videos, but I've never really explained them in detail. At first glance, this is what it looks like. The shoreline itself has a running series of humps and dips. Frequently there is a minor sandbar or raised bottom offshore that runs parallel to the shoreline, typically within 100 yards out or so. And there is usually not much of a trough, so the water is relatively shallow. What you don't see is that the offshore bar or raised bottom also has humps and dips, many times in almost direct proportion to those on the shoreline. These humps and dips, in conjunction with those on the shoreline, determine how the water flows and where the sand that is stirred up by wave and tidal action winds up. The resulting structures are basically smaller, more subtle versions of points and holes. Here's a short version of how it works. Waves break on the highest spots on the bar first. This pushes water towards shore. This water returns to the ocean through the dips, much like a rip, just not as strong. So operating on the premise that fish want a little water over their heads, it's dips that you want to look for, and the deeper the better. They may only be a few feet deeper than the surrounding bottom, but sometimes that's all you need. This is what all this looks like from the beach. Looking down the beach, there is a series of humps and dips going on for as far as the eye can see. There is a shallow sandbar offshore, about 80 yards out, and no pronounced trough based on wave action. The shore dip I've selected is a bit deeper than the others as shown by the waterline. The next step is to verify that the sandbar has a dip in it also, and this is done by observing wave action. To the left, there are waves breaking on the bar and spilling breakers all the way to shore. This creates areas of constant white water. The short version no trough, and fairly shallow bottom with a uniform rise angle to shore. It's pretty much the same thing to my right. But out in front of the dip, the waves roll through the sandbar without breaking, or only partially breaking, indicating deeper water at that point in the bar. The plunging breakers on shore also indicate deeper bottom. This is where fish cruising the outer edges of the sandbar are most likely to follow the edge of the dip in towards shore, giving you a shot at those fish. The deeper the dip, the better. So what do standing waves have to do with this? Finding subtle structure based on wave action on beach fronts like this one only works on the incoming tide, preferably with an onshore wind. These conditions provide the purest waveforms. When the tide is going out, particularly with an offshore wind, more water tries to return to the ocean through the dips and the resulting current pushing against the incoming waves causes them to break just like a rising bottom would. So when attempting to read bottom contour by observing wave action, always try to do so on the incoming tide. Humps and dips are the subtle side of fishing. No pronounced sandbars, no real cuts, no real troughs, no real points, no real holes, just some humps and dips. But like in poker, you have to play the hand you're giving. So if dips are all your beach has to offer, then finding the right one can make all the difference. That's my view from the beach, so until next time, be well and catch him up.